Hello and welcome to a new video from the Society for the Environment. Today we focus on the Registered Environmental Practitioner Professional Registration. And to be more specific, we're going to be looking at how to apply for the registration. To prevent any confusion, Registered Environmental Practitioner is also known by its post-nominals RFP and will likely be referred to this throughout the video today. At the time of recording, the RFP registration was finalized just two weeks ago and is therefore pretty much brand new. To put a name to a voice, my name is Phil Underwood. I'm the engagement manager here at the Society for the Environment. I will be providing an introduction before handing over to my colleague Jeff to provide the details you're going to need. So, some background to begin with. The Society for the Environment holds a Royal Charter, which was awarded in 2004. We hold the three professional registers for environmental professionals. They are the Registered Environmental Technician, or RF Tech, the Registered Environmental Practitioner, or RFP, and the Chartered Environmentalist, or CM. The Society operates as an umbrella professional body, currently made up of 24 professional bodies known as member bodies. All of these hold a license granted by the Society for the Environment to award the CM registration to their members. Three of the professional bodies hold a RMF Tech license, and it is yet to be confirmed which professional bodies will be offering the RFP due to the early stages at which we are recording this video. These professional bodies come from a wide range of industries and sectors. Details of who they are will be provided by Jeff a little bit later on in the video. The number of environmental professionals registered with the society currently stands at over seven and a half thousand across the world. So before I pop back to ask some FAQ towards the end of this video, I'm going to hand over to Jeff. Jeff is the head of licensing, registration and standards at the Society for the Environment, and he will be giving you more detail into how to become a registered environmental practitioner. Thanks, Phil. Hello, everybody. Let's have a quick run through the agenda for this guidance video. We'll be looking at the application criteria, route to registration, application process, assessment and post-assessment, what happens next, and then the frequently asked questions that Phil mentioned just a moment ago. So here are our 24 member bodies. Hopefully you can see your professional body listed, or if you are not already a member, one that you would like to join. The eligibility criteria for RNP are there on the screen. Now these are what an applicant must meet. You must be uh, a member of one of our licensed members. You must have uh, a certain level of uh, knowledge, uh, possess a certain level of experience, be prepared, be willing to comply with the Society's Code of Professional Conduct and to comply with the CPD requirements, both of your professional body and the society. There is just one route to RNP registration and it is called the professional review route. So there are two elements to the application process. If you meet the eligibility criteria, your professional body, our licensed member, will invite you to apply. And as I say, there are two elements to your application. These will show how you meet the eligibility criteria and very importantly, meet the standards, the RMP competencies of which there are 12. There are the A and B competencies. Now these may very well be contextualized by your professional body to reflect both yours and their sector, but it is important you must meet all of them. And these are the C and D competencies. They are generic across all sectors, sometimes known as soft skills, but they are as equally important as A and B. And I cannot stress, they all must be achieved. As I said earlier, you must have acquired a level of knowledge equivalent 
to a QCF level five qualification in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, for example, an HND, that equivalent level of knowledge will be determined by your professional body. To satisfy this element, you must possess sufficient relevant practical experience to be able to demonstrate the RM fee competencies. The sufficiency of experience will be again determined by your professional body, but it doesn't have to be paid work. It could include voluntary work and or a work placement. This element you would probably cover in your CV uh, and written submission. Now this is almost a trick slide as an interview is not a mandatory element of the RMV assessment process. So it is very likely that you will not have to have one. However, your professional body may invite you to have an interview if it is for a reasonable adjustment or it is part of their membership process or they think you will benefit from having one. So, when the assessment process has been completed and the appropriate committee at your professional body has ratified the assessor's recommendation, your professional body will commence the registration process with our registration team and you will be very close to achieving your RMV status. What now? Well, here's your checklist. Please become a member of one of our licensed members. Have a chat with their membership team about your application. Complete the initial application process and take those first steps in becoming a registered environmental practitioner, an RMP. Thank you very much, Jeff. And hopefully that gives people an idea of how to become a registered environmental practitioner. What we have now is a few uh, frequently asked questions, which we're just going to run through. So, Jeff, what does it cost? Initial registration is £60 in the first year, uh, and renewal of registration is £30 in subsequent years. Now, that's what we charge for registration. You need to speak to your professional body about what they will charge or potentially charge on top of that. Okay. And how long would it generally take to fully complete the application process and gain the RFP registration? It's not easy to give a specific time frame, but I would suggest three to six months. A lot will depend on if your uh, application is fully complete and your written submission uh, meets the needs of your professional body's assessors. The advantage of not having to have an interview is that that assessment process should be uh, a lot shorter. So I would estimate three to six months from making your application. Thank you very much. The next question is, what are the benefits of becoming a registered environmental practitioner? And I think that's probably one that I should take, I suppose. Um, yes. the, main, the main benefits are you can call yourself a registered environmental practitioner and you can use the RMP letters after your name. And a huge benefit of that is that you are basically signifying that you have been judged by your peers to have met the standards to call yourself a registered environmental practitioner, which holds a lot of weight when it comes to um, talking with your clients and your employers. Another benefit of it is that uh, if you are aiming for chartership, then you have experience of going through part of the process um, to gain this professional registration, which will stand you in good stead for your chartered environmentalist application as well. There are many other benefits, um, which you'll find details of in various places, uh, but we won't go through them all now. So the next question, do I need to hold a specific qualification in order to apply for RFP? Jeff? No, you don't. As long as it 
is at level five in that QCF, that qualifications framework. It could really be anything. I, I gave an example during earlier in the video of an HND, but it could be any qualification. Uh, and that academic achievement, it can be decided by, it will be decided by your professional body. There, there is flexibility. So it's not, oh, you've got to have A, you could have B and C, D and E, and, and, and that would equally be uh, sufficient. Speak to your professional body uh, and they will give you guidance. Fantastic. And I think it's worth noting that uh, to become a chartered environmentalist, you have to have uh, the equivalence of master's level knowledge. However, there are chartered environmentalists who only have GCSEs as their highest qualification. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have that qualification as long as you can prove that you have the, um, the equivalent knowledge. Does that sound about right, Jeff? Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. As I say, there's flexibility. Mm. Okay, final FAQ. Is there a time scale for applications? Again, this, is, this, this isn't an easy one for us to answer. It might be that your professional body has particular times in the year when they would be able to uh, process applications. They have assessors available. Um, but no, I mean, generally speaking, there is no set time scale for applications. Uh, but I would advise that if you're thinking about it, you should do it rather than just leave it. Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Do it now. Take that first step. Make contact with your professional body and take that first step to getting professional recognition. And that message brings us neatly to the close of this particular video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we wish you all the very best with your RFP applications. And hopefully, we will speak to you again soon.